Let's get good. I am the gamer under development, and this is the Warframe Beginner's Guide to the Galaxy. We are back with Rhino this time, who's now complete. We're going to take a look at his abilities real quick, and then this episode I'm going to be showing you guys like three different new activities that are going to be available to you. You may have already done some of these things, but they're very useful for your progression in the game, so I'm going to go through them with you real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Rhino to get started. Got some basic mods on here, using some defensive mods that we already had leveled up along with flow so that we have a lot of energy and intensify. There's a reason for intensify, but I'll get into that in just a moment. We're going to start by taking a look at his abilities. He has his Rhino Charge on one. This is literally a damage ability that also like ragdolls enemies. And for the most part, this is just entertaining. You can kind of see the enemies flying away in that little clip, but I'll show it to you in action later. That being said, this is probably the least useful ability in his entire kit. And that's just because everything else he has is so much more utility. His number two is Iron Skin. Rhino hardens his skin, insulating himself from all damage. Now this is why we wanted Intensify on, because that actually increases the amount of armor this gives you. The reason this is extremely powerful, guys, is that when you activate it, you get two seconds of invulnerability, which does scale with duration, I believe. And what it does is it essentially gives you a new health bar. You can see it up in the corner, it's showing it right there. You get an iron skin icon that has a certain amount of health on it. It's literally like an extra health bar, and this is why he's so good for new players. Because if that extra health bar depletes, you can just cast iron skin again. So it's a really, really incredible ability. There is one more effect from iron skin, and that is when it's active, he cannot be knocked down, which is another great feature. Uh, his three is roar, grants all nearby warframes increased damage for a short duration. So it is a 10% damage increase based on our current ability strength. We are going to be looking to raise that over time. Mind you that these are not all leveled up to the max level yet either because our Rhino is only ranked 12 right now. And then his 4 is Rhino Stomp, which literally does an AoE damage effect that pops enemies up in the air and decreases their speed. And you can shoot them and hit them while they're in the air. In fact, one of the combos that you can use with Rhinos, you can pop them up and then charge them and they'll fly even further away because they're already like not affected by gravity. Uh, that being said, we mainly use this as a CC ability, which is why I say his 1 is the least important. His 2 is literally a second health bar, which is great. His 3 is a damage increase, which is also great. And his 4 is a massive CC. The other thing that's interesting to note about his 4 is that there are certain enemies that are immune to most forms of CC that are not immune to his stomp, which makes him incredibly powerful. That being said, he is a little bit of a noob frame. Doesn't take a whole lot of skill to pilot him, you just... Get out there, you put your iron skin on, you use your roar when you need the damage, and you stomp when you want to beat stuff down. Uh, so the first thing we're going to be taking a look at here is... Invasions. Now, one of the reasons we're doing invasions is because one of the night waves this week is do nine invasion missions. Uh, so the way that invasions work is you go up to this invasion tab up here, and we've got a couple of them here. There's one right here that's Corpus Siege. It's Corpus versus Grenier. And you can see these rewards right here, the Daravandal Receiver and the Sheev Heatsink. And then if we come down to this one, we see the rewards are Fieldrin or Mutagen Masses. Those are both crafting materials that can be built with a recipe from the dojo of your clan, but they're not necessarily easy to get, so you can get them through here. Now I'm gonna show you guys how interceptions work so that you can basically use these in your own gameplay. So we go into here and we get this little menu right here where it's Corpus versus Grenier. We can pick which side we want to side with. Now I've already done the Corpus side once and that's the side we'll be doing. And the reason why is because I want the Dara Vandal receiver. That's a part for building a weapon called the Dara Vandal that's actually pretty nice. The other alternative was to go Grenier side and we would have gotten the Sheev heat sink, which is a part for a melee weapon. I was more interested in the Vandal, which is why we're going to go there. So we can see if we choose to support the Corpus, we have an exterminate mission against the Grenier. If we choose to support the Grenier, we have a defense mission against the Corpus. So we're going to go ahead and take that. This is going to put us on an exterminate mission for the Corpus here. And it's important to note that after you do three of these, you'll qualify for rewards. But the other thing that will happen is you will technically get a hit mark put out on you by the other faction. So if we do three of these, we're going to get a hit mark placed on us by the Grenier which means that special kill squads will spawn and you can actually get loot from those too. So it's like a double reward system, uh, especially if you know what you're looking for from those factions. Sorry guys, I needed to turn that down a little bit. Ooh, Thunderbolt, nice pickup there. We like slide in and immediately get a rare mod. So I'm gonna activate Iron Skin here and now if you look up in the corner, you can see it says zero. Uh, that's because for the first couple of seconds, if you get hit, it actually increases the amount that Iron Skin generates of its second health bar. 
But now if we look up there, we can see the Iron Skin icon, and we have 1,072 health provided by that. And you'll note that as enemies hit us, that will start to decrease. Uh, as that decreases, we will keep an eye on it, and we'll just recast it again when it gets empty. So really no big issue there. It's just a huge, huge health boost. I mean, if you look at our base stats after that, we still have on a shield mod and an armor mod, so we have about a thousand health, plus an extra thousand health. It basically doubles our health. This is why it's exceptionally useful for new players, because having a double health pool is excellent. Wow, we're already done here. Oh, no, we're not. I thought we were, because it was showing the extraction icon, but I guess I was mistaken. Uh, so let's look at Roar real quick. I gotta find an enemy that they're not going to kill immediately, though, because everybody's slaughtering everything. Uh, this can be one of the problems with demonstrating stuff in action, especially if you're in a group. Uh, if we can just find somebody that everybody else is not killing, that will help. Oof. That might take a second. There we go, there's someone. Alright, oh, that's the worst target. Okay, so if we shoot this guy, we can see our damage numbers are pretty low. We're doing about 24 when we hit him. Now if we go ahead and roar, We'd see that number goes up to 30, and we're getting yellow hits. Uh, yellow hits are slight crits, basically. There's three different tiers to crits, yellow, orange, and red. Uh, there might actually be one in excess of that, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, when we are affected by Roar, we will glow yellow, as you can see. It's a good way to tell that you do have your damage buff up. And while that 10 damage increase may not seem like a whole lot, that's because it is a 10% increase, and our Gorgon doesn't have a very high base damage. First, oh, wow, Iron Phoenix, another sword stance mod. That's actually really nice. I don't know how this account has more sword stance mods than my main account now, uh, but it does. So anyways, you want to keep your roar up, you want to keep your iron skin up, and then you just unload on everybody. And I don't know if we actually have access to our four yet, but we're getting there. I will say this, you will notice a increase in the speed with which we can kill stuff when we activate our roar. It doesn't look like much on this particular weapon because it's a low base damage, high fire rate weapon. Uh, but when I was using this in some of the other missions while I was preparing for this video, it makes a noticeable difference. Uh, and I'll show you that probably when we get to those other things I wanted to show you today. So there we go. Very simple. We completed an invasion. We got our second completion for Nightwave. And we need to do one more of these if we want the reward, but I'm going to come back and do that off camera because there are a couple other things I want to show you today. Did get some nice mods there. Iron Phoenix is something I don't even think I have on my main account, which it blows me away how many mods I have on this account that I don't actually have on my main account. I would expect it to be the reverse. And I mean, it is in a lot of ways, but not as much as I would think. Uh, so I want to take a look at where our... No, I don't want the foundry. Let's take a look at where our gun is right now, our Gorgon. Rank 22, we still got a little bit of a ways to go with that, which is totally fine. I mean, that's that's kind of to be expected. Um, can we put something else on now that we have four more capacity? And I don't think we can. Like, you can see our base damage here is very, very low. It's very, very low. I'd like it to be higher than that, but it's just not going to be uh, until we get this leveled up enough that we can put on a nice serration here. Although one thing we could do, actually, now that I think about it, we could do this. That's real nice. We did pick up a split chamber mod while I was off off camera, and I got that doing one of the activities that I'll be showing you today. Split chamber is incredibly powerful. It gives you multi-shot, which means that every time you fire, you potentially could fire another shell. That's without consuming ammo. Uh, so right now we have a 1.1 multi-shot, but if we were to bring this up, like it, it makes a big, big difference. If we were to bring this up all the way to max, it would give us a 90% chance to fire a second shell, which means that nearly every time you fire, you're firing twice for half the ammo, doing double the damage. Wow, look at the difference Serration made there. It took us up to 60 damage already. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the next thing I wanna show you guys. Now, this is a little bit more complex, but as I said, I started a dojo just for new players. If you guys want an invite so that you can come get your stuff, just let me know. Contact me on YouTube, contact me on Twitter, Discord, whatever, and we will get you in here. Because for this one, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to one of the labs. Now, the lab we're looking for here is the Tenno Lab, which I could just fast travel to, but for some reason I decided I was going to run, so we'll just run over there. Honestly, I like the dojos. I like looking at them. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to come to our Tenno Lab here, and we're going to get the Arcwing Launcher Segment Research. 
Now, this is important because without this... Oh, I need MR5 still. Okay, well, the good news is we can still check the material requirements for it. Um, so if we go to replicate this and we look at the blueprint, we can see the material requirements for it, because that's what I really wanted to show you guys was how to get those. Oxium generally comes from just doing missions, like you're just going to get that from doing missions on Earth. I believe you can also mine for it on Plains of Eidolon, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how to farm Iridite and Grokdrol. Those are very, very uh, important resources, and there are some nifty little tricks that you can use as a new player to farm them more efficiently. So I'm going to leave the dojo now, and we're going to go to the Plains of Eidolon, and I'm going to show you some of those tricks. We're actually going to go to Cetus first, because that's kind of important to pull the trick off. Uh, let's see. Before we do that, I do want to check one more thing, though. I want to go over to the Foundry, because... This is an important distinction that a lot of people miss, and it will come back to bite you in the end if you don't catch it. There is an Arcwing Launcher, and there's also the Arcwing Launcher segment. They are two separate things, so you'll need a lot of Iridite and a lot of Grokdrol to, to complete this. But you also need fish oil, so I'm going to show you guys how to fish in Plains of Eidolon. I don't know if we've done that yet. I mean, an easy way to tell would be to see if I actually have the fishing spear on my gear wheel. I do not. All right, so that's good. That means we're gonna have to go get a fishing spear, which is fine. And I'll show you guys how to easily fish up some fish oil in the Plains of Eidolon. I'll actually show you the fishing spot that you wanna use if you're trying to farm Gara, because that will be double useful. Okay, so we're gonna start out by going to Cetus here. Uh, I'll show you the Iridite trick first, and we're just gonna do a quick run so that I can kind of show you the, the trick to getting your Iridite as quickly as possible. Yeah, we'll skip the cinematic there. And honestly, right here, we're just going to go straight to Kanzu. I wonder how much reputation we have. Oh, and it's night, so that's that's going to be fun. Uh, night makes things a little bit more hairy, is a good way to put it. So if you want to easily collect Iridite, what you're going to want to do here... Oh, really? Okay, so we can't take this one yet. Must be Mastery Rank 5. So when you hit Mastery Rank 5, you'll be able to take this highest level bounty. The reason you take this is because it makes it so that every Iridite node on the plane spawns three Iridite instead of one, which triples the rate that you're gaining it. Uh, so we can't do that, so what we'll do instead is we'll take Spycatcher here, which will, you know, give us two per node instead of three, but it still helps us farm them a little bit faster. And the other thing we need to do here is we need to go find the Fisherman. Now, if you look on your mini-map, there's a little fish icon that you can go to. The other thing is you can just fast travel to them by name. Fisher High Luke. And now when we talk to Fisher High Luke, we're going to go browse wares here. And we need to pick up the Lanzo Fishing Spear. Now, there are other fishing spears here that you can get. But the Lanzo tends to work fine for me. I've never needed another one. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And then the important thing here is we're going to make sure that we put it on our gear wheel. If we don't put it on our gear wheel and we go out to the plains, we won't be able to fish, which basically defeats the purpose. Uh, the other thing we could buy here if we wanted to, you don't need this, I want to stress that, because it can get expensive rep-wise to continue buying these. But you can buy bait, you can also buy luminous dye. Now if you're going to buy either one of the two, I recommend luminous dye over bait, and that's because if you're new to fishing, it'll actually make the fishing process a lot easier for you. Now that we've got those things, we're going to actually just head out on the planes. We do have our K-Drive equipped that we got from Fortuna. That's going to make traveling the planes a little bit less of a headache. Uh, one other thing you want to do here is because we're just out gathering resources and we don't want to be dragged into missions, really, we're going to go to solo. Now, I know normally we don't do solo, but in this instance, it makes sense because we're really not trying to slow anyone else down who is trying to complete mission content. Uh, and we're not going to be doing our mission. Like, we have a bounty out here, but we're not actually here for the bounty. Now hop on our K-Drive here, and we'll just zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, you can put an enemy radar down, or on your mods to help you find Iridite a little bit easier. Because they do pop up as breakable nodes on the map. But we can honestly just keep our eyes open. There's an Iridite right there. They do glow, so you can find them relatively easily. Now, if I shoot this... We got three Iridite there, so we didn't even need the highest level one, actually. We can just do this one, and we get three Iridite per one of those nodes that we break, which is extremely useful. Grok Droll is going to come from Grenier Camps, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Oh, look, more Iridite. Thank you. So we're going to grab that Iridite, and we're going to go fishing here real quick so you can see how to get your fish. And then I will show you where to gather up some Grok, relative, Grok Droll relatively easily. 
and after that we'll probably head back into Cetus so that I can show you how to get fish oil from your fish. Oh, that was a mistake. I I dove off the board into the water. Very effective there, guys. Very effective. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull my fishing spear out here. And when we do that, we have the option of deploying our die just by pressing 3. And there we go. Immediately, you can see a mawfish here. We're going to throw the spear, and bam, we hooked it. Got a mawfish. Beautiful. Uh, that is actually a really, really nice catch. Normally, I don't fish here at night. I fish during the day. Shark eels. These are lovely. You'll need these in order to get Gara. So we're actually fine with just catching them. There we go. Now, you do have to account for the fact that the spear drops a little bit, so if you're going for something that's way out there, it's a little bit tougher, right? Because you have to kind of account for the drop. Uh, yeah, that wasn't going to hit no matter what. Just a, a rough shot to get something further away. That mawfish right there. Oh, I accounted for the drop there. We still didn't get it. Uh, we have one right here that's super close, though. We're just going to hook him. There we go. Uh, so this is... The reason they're glowing is because of that luminous dye. But even without the luminous dye, if you just watch the water and you look for something that's moving, you can find fish relatively easily. The dye does help if you're brand new to fishing, though, because it does make things a little bit more apparent. You can see the drop on the shot there a little bit better on that one. Uh, when they're pretty far out, it's actually kind of hard to count. Oh, there we go. See that? I accounted for the drop a little bit there, and we ended up getting that shark eel. Uh, this is all there is to fishing. It's actually quite fun to just come out here and do this sometimes. I find it relaxing and kind of cathartic. Uh, we could go to this side and see about fishing without our die, just to see if we can kind of point out fish here. It does sometimes take a second for them to spawn. The other thing is, if you mouse over a fish, It'll say the fish's name, so even if you don't have die and you're not really seeing anything, you can kind of just move your mouse around. Alright, well the luminous die is hovering charcoals over here, so... Or highlighting charcoals over here. So we could go for them. There we go. That's how they appear when you don't have luminous die. They're just little dark spots maybe moving. And you can still hook them like that. <laughs> I like that he's glowing now because we hooked him and pulled him into the range of our die. Uh, so I'll just grab this because it's, like, super readily available. Oh, I whiffed it. Alright, so much for being super readily available. You can see why they get a little bit tougher to see out there when you don't have die. That's hilarious that they light up when you pull them in, though. Uh, so I'm just gonna snag this guy. The one that almost got away. And then we'll head back in, or rather, we'll head to go get Grok Drool first. So Grok Drool is going to be available at any one of the camps that are run by the Grenier on this map. Generally, when you're farming Grok Drool, the most efficient thing is to go over to the Ocean's Edge. Uh, we are fighting some relatively high-level enemies here. I think we'll be fine because we're on Rhino, and it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But at the same time, I want to be careful because we may get sort of overdone here. Also, you can grind trees. D don't know if I mentioned that, but it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, Tony Hawk's space skater here. So we're going to ignore those Grenier on our way to sort of... Oh, I was actually going to the objective for the mission. We don't want that. We want to go to the edge here and sort of reach the ocean area because this is where there's a ton of Grok Drool in all these little camps. So we're almost there. It does take a minute to get there on your K-Drive, and the reason why we want to get that Arcwing launcher segment is because once we get it, we can actually use the Arcwing to fly around these open world zones. It will drastically decrease the amount of time it takes you to get places. Uh, another thing you can do, though, while you're here is this. You can snag one of these, and there you go. Now you can kind of fly around. Your Arcwing is infinitely faster than this, uh, but it does not include an inherently built-in weapon either. Oh man, it's been so long since I've driven one of these. I don't remember what the key is to descend. I think it's control. Gosh, this is just painful. It's painful how slow this thing descends. Uh, anyways, we're going to look for some Grok Drool here. I'm probably going to abandon this when we get close to one of these areas. Just like that. Oh boy. Okay, these are level 40 turrets. They take quite a beating to take out. I'm going to switch over to my gun here and just look for some Grok Drool nodes. They're these things. They say Grok Drool drums, and they have this yellow stuff that drops out. It actually looks a very... 
It looks very, very similar to uh, what would be an affinity drop, but it's not. And like I said, it generally comes in those containers. You'll want to break the containers, grab the Grok rule. That's how you get it. Wow, our iron skin came off very quickly here. Uh, because these enemies are very, very high level, and we are not on a sort of rank cap frame either. Which is not going to work in our favor. There's another one here. So grab that. Another one here. Grab that. Quite a bit of Grok rule already, just from kind of running around here. You'll note that you don't really need to fight the enemies. You can just kind of run past them. Grab the Grok rule. Try to stay on, on task here. We're not here to fight. We're here to get Grok rule. Oh, look at that. Sweet, sweet Grok rule right there. Okay. Now that we've got it, we're going to head back to Cetus. That gives you guys an idea how you're going to gather all those things. I'm going to head over to Fisher High Luke, and we're going to cut up our fish that we got so that you guys can see how that works. You can also trade your fish in for reputation with Ostrin, which is the Cetus reputation. I don't recommend doing that, though, unless you're kind of already, like, rep-capped and you don't find any other need for the fish. Generally, you're going to need the materials from the fish to build things like Gara. You're going to need it to build weapons that you get here. Sort of all of the things. And if you're ever trying to find your way back to Cetus, just look for the Tall Tower. That's that's where we're going. We're going to the Tall Tower. I just got stuck on a tree stump because I was looking at the Tall Tower on the horizon, guys. That's that's how you pro play it. Oh, and I just killed Rhino. D don't mind that. His neck is fine. His neck is fine. Iron Skin has protected him from my, my bad attempt to do a front flip with no air whatsoever. So we should be in Cetus in just a moment. Wait a minute, where am I? Did I get lost along the way? Yeah, apparently I did. So we, the other thing is, if you go straight towards the tower, sometimes you'll hit this blue barrier wall right here. If that's the case, you can just ride along the edge of the wall. And you should be able to very easily find your way back to Cetus. Uh, most of the open world zones, once you spend enough time in them, you will actually understand the map well enough that you don't need to use it. You can just kind of get around on your own. You learn to recognize the landmarks and things like that. Okay, we're going to get off of our K-Drive right here so we can head right back into Cetus. Open Sesame. And once we get back into Cetus, we can go ahead and turn in our fish to Fisher High Luke. And that's going to be how we get all of the different materials that we require, except for Oxium. And like I said, Oxium, you can get just running missions. Uh, you can also get it from, I believe, mining on the Plains of Cetus. I think we've talked about mining a little bit before. If we haven't, though, I can cover that in the next one. Do let me know if you guys don't know how to do that or if I haven't covered it, because I'm pretty sure we have. Uh, let's go to Fisher High Luke here, and we're going to go, Hi there. Can I have you cut some fish for me? I'm going to tell her to cut up all of our fish. And what she's going to do then is she's going to give us materials. And you can see the list of materials as we go. So if we go to cut fish here, this is what we're going to get. 16 fish oil, 3 charc electroplax, 26 fish meat, 15 fish scales, and 4 mawfish bones. Sounds good, thanks. That doesn't cost us any money or anything. There we go, we now have some fish oil. And we are on our way to building our Arcwing launcher. Obviously we need to hit MR5 before we can do that. And I am ridiculously close to MR5. I honestly just don't have as much time as I, I had expected to have to grind on this account. Uh, so it's taking a moment. But when we finish the weapon we currently have, the Gorgon, we should hit MR5. So it'll be next episode at the latest, guys. Uh, and that, w that episode will put the Arcwing Launcher together for sure, and we'll take it out and have some fun with it. Uh, the last thing I want to show you in today's episode, now that we understand how to gather those materials, we know how to do our invasions, is the Thermia Fractures event. This is currently going on. The reward for doing 100 Thermia Fractures is the Opticore Vandal. This is a gun that fires a giant charged up laser beam. It does magnetic damage innately, but you can add more damage to it. It has a reasonable status chance, I believe. It's just a really, really good gun. And the thing that makes it extra valuable for free to play players is that you can obtain it right now and it gives you a weapon slot when you get it. So even if you hate the gun, like you absolutely hate it, and I don't recommend doing this because you can't replace it if you do, but even if you absolutely hate it, you can sell it and have another weapon slot. So all we have to do to start this event is click here and go to Thermia Fractures and click again. It's going to put us in queue. We'll probably... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We want to change this so that we're in public. Uh, this is not an event that you're going to want to do alone. Especially if you're not in a capped out frame with a reactor on it so that you have the maximum mod capacity. 
The enemies you're going to be facing here are between rank 30 and 50, so you're going to need help. That's okay. People are usually very, very cool about helping. Uh, in this case, we're going to be joining... I'm not going to read that name. Uh, that being said, when we get in, I'll show you guys kind of how the event flows. Basically, what we do is we need to hunt down the uh, Orb Mother, I believe it is. I, there's a couple different giant spiders on on Fortuna in Orb Valis, uh, but I believe we're hunting down the Orb Mother who has all these little, like, spiderlings around her. Oh, it kicked us out. Okay. I'm guessing that he must have extracted while we were on our way in. Hopefully we get a group this time. Um... So you find the Orb Mother. She has a bunch of spiderlings around her that have these blue tanks on her or on their back with coolant in them. You need to kill those spiders, grab a coolant tank, and then there's all these places in Orb Valis where there's like lava spewing out of the ground. You and your team will go there. You'll place your coolant containers in those spots and then defend them as they cool down the Thermia Fractures. Whoa, where did it spawn us? We are right in the middle of it here. I don't even know if there's a Thermia Fracture here or if we're just in a group that has, like, heat. Yeah, okay. I think they might have just finished a Fracture here. But you can see that our squad has left, so we're getting out of here, too. We're not going to hang around. Uh, so what we need to do here is we need to look for the Orb Mother so that we can grab our coolant containers off of the baby spiders. You guys hear that? Oh, yeah. There she is. Oh, it's the Exploiter Orb. There we go. Let's go, guys. We got the tag on her. We're gonna not confront her directly, because she can do a lot of damage. Like, she'll level you if you go straight at her. So we kind of want her to... Oof. Putting our Iron Skin up. We kind of want her to get past where we're at, so that we can just take out her little underling guys. Uh, this is dangerous. I'm in danger. That, that's what this moment is. There they are. Hello, friend. So these are the things that we have to take out. As you can see, they're tanky as all get out. Oh, man. And we went down here. Just gonna keep shooting at it, see if anybody comes over and helps. Oh, he recharged his shield. Thank you, teammates, for helping out. We're gonna do this, get our iron skin up so that we don't go down immediately. Oof, and you can see we're taking a lot of damage from her. She's actually doing a good bit of damage with that cannon from the underside of her body, which is why I was like, we don't really want to get close to her. Ow, ow, please stop. Please stop rolling to protect ourselves. Iron skin if we have the energy, which we do. Lovely. So that allows us to stay up, and there is the coolant. We needed that. Somebody else killed that guy, but that's fine. Uh, there's a couple more coolant cells here that other people can grab. And then all we need to do after that is find ourselves a Thermia Fracture. All right. So it took a second, guys. It took a second. I'll probably cut all of that out anyway, but uh, this, is, this is what we're after. And where, oh, where has my Thermia Fracture gone? The Thermia Fractures are a lot easier to find than she was herself. And that's because we can just kind of buzz around and look for the smoldering in the sky. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's find it. You can also lower your wanted level before you... There's one. Nailed it. Okay, let's mark it for everybody else so they know where we're going. And then we're just going to hang out here and wait for the rest of the squad, because if we all put our coolant things in at the same time, it makes it a little bit faster. So, we're just gonna chill here and wait. Hi there. Is this an Octavia? Do we have an Octavia with us? It is. What's up, Octavia? Oh, I do have dances. Let's dance with Octavia while we chill. Doof, 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 doof. Uh-oh. Ungo Fisher Chevy has died. Oh, we have two Octavias. This should be cake. Okay. You guys ready? Let's do it, Octavias. Let's go. All right, so everybody puts their canisters in. We got three out of four in. Uh, and now we just have to defend this from all the enemies. So I put my iron skin on, but Octavia's dropping her noisemakers. They're going to take everything out. We're just going to chill. 
I'm gonna rock out to Octavia's sweet beats while everything kind of dies. Uh, definitely do help out, though. Be a good squad mate. Try to impact people. Don't whiff your one like I just did right there. We don't have access to our four yet. Ooh, and our, our iron skin is down already, so I'm gonna refresh that real quick. Uh, depending on your rank when you come in here and whether or not you're using Rhino, one thing you're gonna want to be doing is keeping your eyes open for energy and watching your iron skin. Iron skin is my life or death. If iron skin falls off, I'm actually in a lot of trouble. So right now, I'm at risk. And what I need to do is I need to find and kill enough enemies to get some energy to put my iron skin back up. But I also want to take out these towers right here because taking those out is going to prevent more enemies from spawning. And now there's two of us down, and I'm just going to shoot this guy in the head while I wait to see if somebody reses me. If nobody reses you and you die, you can just use a self-res. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, hello there. That is a giant Bastille. Uh, that is Vobon, who we actually have parts to build. Oh, that's that's great. Vobon has a giant Bastille here. This is going to make this ridiculous. Uh, that big wall that you can kind of see that's being shaped by those lasers floating around us, that is Bastille. And when Vobon activates it, it's going to suck everybody into the center of it. And then you can just kind of all focus your fire there. 1500 iron skin making sure to scoop up our energy here so that we can keep iron skin up if it does go down uh all right let's get this doing all right here and there's the beats gonna go ahead and use our roar to give everybody on our squad a damage buff here oh my god one of them has rise against playing i i love whoever's doing that where are you Oh my gosh. Maybe it's not Rise Against, but it sounds like it. I think it's actually an old video game theme that... I don't know what it's from, though. I can't remember. Oh, and I went down again. Oh, it is Undertale. You're right. Thank you. Uh... Fiance to the rescue there. It was the Undertale music. I got it confused with Rise Against. I am a bad Rise Against fan. That's that's what y'all just heard here. All right, I'm going to put my Iron Skin back up this time so I don't get wrecked. And I'm going to make sure that I stay on the point. And we're going to take out this tower so that we don't get more enemies spawning. Yeah, you can see we really need our roar to be able to even damage these guys. And it's because they have both shields and armor. And there we go. They are rank 60. See, that's what I was saying. They are rank 60. Even though it says that this event is 10 to 30, it's not. Oh my gosh, I went down again. It's okay. I I'm going to be the scrub they have to carry. What's important here is to realize that the weapon you get from this is actually really, really good. So, it's not a big deal if you go down. Like, people will help you back up. Just kind of try to be as useful to your team as you can. There's really not a whole lot we can do when the enemies are rank 60. Uh, it might have actually been wiser to come into this as Volt, though, because Volt was capped out, and I think I already put a reactor on him. So we could have potentially modded him up to be a little bit more useful here. That being said, as long as we're providing our roar to the entire squad, that's a little bit of something, you know? We're providing roar, we're taking shots for enemy, for allies so that they don't die. Uh, and at the same time, as long as we keep our iron skin up, we're not that much of a hindrance. For the most part too though, a lot of the players that you'll find in here may be high enough level that they don't really care because they could have done this mission alone. So it's just nice to have people to run with. At least that's how I feel when I'm doing it on my main. like. Sure, I could do this on my own on my main pretty easily by using, like, Gara or something like that. Uh, but it's always nice to have people to run with. Alright, Iron Skin and Roar are up, and we're taking things out. Now, the other thing here, too, is I, I am being a little bit greedy by taking Rhino into this, because I wanted to take Rhino because I knew I would rank him up pretty quickly if I did. Uh, we're actually going to rank up very, very quickly here because we're fighting enemies that are, like, level 60, so... 
long as we stay alive and we don't self-res any more than we have to and we keep killing stuff, we should rank our weapons and our frame up relatively fast. Oh, they just all got bestilled, so I was charging them. There you go. You can see the guy ragdolling there. That's always fun. Boom! Get ragdolled. That's, that's what the one does. The one ragdolls them. It's entertaining, but it's not necessarily super effective. Iron Skin here saved my life because I was at four health. And I'm just trying to take out this tower so that we don't get more enemies spawning. Oh, it's done. Okay, this fracture is done. We need to get out of here now. Uh, that split chamber that I got that I was showing you guys, I actually got doing this earlier. So if you do this with, you know, a good team and just stick with them, you should be okay. Okay, so they are already at the next Thermia point. We've got to get over there. Let's do it. So funny. Thank you, B. <laughs> background, background fiance helps with the uh, music references. All right, let's take that tower out and find our our team here and give them all the roar. That's so cool. I I love Octavia. Octavia is one of my favorite frames. For the longest time, that was like my main. I don't know, guys. Like I I constantly shift my main. Lately, my main has been uh, Atlas. And it's just because I'm like, ooh, there's some fun things you can do with Atlas that I didn't understand when I first got him, and now I want to try those fun things. Oh yeah, we're hardly even making a dent in his shields. Do we have a Hydroid now, too? Oh, nice. Okay. Hydroid means extra loot. Boom! Everybody gets smashed. Uh, one of our allies is bleeding out here. We're going to go try to save them. Got you. I got you, fam. I'm gonna die before I res you. No, I'm not. Oh, look at that. Iron skin for... There you go, guys. Iron skin saving the day. Yeah, we're barely scratching. But we were able to rescue an ally there, so we did something useful to our group. And we can kill beacons so that more enemies don't spawn. Or rather, higher level enemies don't spawn, because... That, that just gets untenable after a while. If you have a group that's full-on, like, max-level characters, then it's fine. Like, you can totally leave it and just be like, All right, guys, we're gonna deal with these max-level enemies that show up. But if you don't, then it's just not a good thing. All right, let's get this guy if we can. We can't. We can hardly even do damage to that guy. Our job right now as the low-level player is to clear the poles if they get left up, those uh, alert poles that cause more enemies to spawn. Uh, it does look like if we find certain squishy enough enemies, though, we can burn through them pretty quickly. Uh, it looks like it's primarily just the actual corpus guys. So we're going good now. All right, let's let them all get sucked in by Bastille and then fire on the center area while also taking out this tower. There we go, tower is down. Oof, that's no fun. Gonna issue our roar here, and then we need to look for energy because we actually do not have enough energy to use iron skin if we need to. Wow, we're just not, not hurting that guy at all, no matter what we do. Uh, you can see up in the upper left corner how long the fracture has left, like we're at 87 out of 100, and the, coolers, or the coolant canister health is there as well, which is what you need to protect. And that beacon is gone. That beacon is gone. Here we go. Coolant canister is doing pretty well here. Uh, our iron skin is still up, but there's not much left on it, and we don't have the energy to recast it. Oh, yeah, we do. We have exactly enough. Right there, we just got diluted thermia. Diluted thermia is actually really important as well because it opens up access to a boss here in Fortuna. You probably won't be ready to take that boss on at this point, but in the future, you will, and that boss provides some very, very nice resources, including pieces to build Hildren, which is the sort of shield buffing shield tank of the game. Woo, that was nice. Just barely made that front flip. Uh, so we can follow them over to the next one. Before we do, though, I want to... Okay, that's that's what I was wondering. Sorry, guys. I was just checking time on the episode. Uh... Oh, yeah, they're at... They're at, uh... 
exploiter orb. She's right up here. I can hear her. Oh, no. We're coming, Scotty. We got you, man. We're on the way. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Grab that cool... Oh, I'm not gonna take that. That's yours. That's yours. Take it. Take it. Oh, no. Here. Take it. That's yours. That's yours. I didn't mean to be a jerk. I'm not trying to steal your coolant container. I just saw it and I was like, cool, this will be easier than me trying to kill one of these spiders. Oh, boy. Yeah. They're level 30, guys. Level 30. This is how well we can damage them. Oh my gosh, their shields recharge faster than we can take them down. Can I take that or you want it? Oh, oh no, I got you, I got you. Oh no, I went down too. Okay, I'm gonna self-res here and get them up. <laughs> I was trying to self-res and get them up. Oof. Iron skin back up. We may be able to get some decent damage on melee here. No, we're not. No, we're not. But he left and left the canister, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that canister. And I'm going to head to the waypoint, which is going to be the next Thermia Fracture. Oh, boy. Uh, obviously, communicating with your teammates helps. Like, if I had asked, hey, is, is someone able to help me kill a canister guy? Because I'm a scrub. They might have been willing to help. They also might have been like, this guy is a huge scrub. Let's get out of the group. So... Probably better to go on your max rank Volt, guys, if you have that. that that's a better deal. Especially because with Volt, you can put up your wall to defend the point and also buff everybody's damage when they shoot through it. So yeah, Volt would have been a better choice. Volt also has a really easy time in the... What? What in the world? How did we fall in the water? We were on our K-Drive. Alright, that's weird and nonsensical. Uh, anyways... Volt is actually really, really good for this. I should have thought of that in the first place because his electrical damage will strip away shields really quickly. And I think he does bonus damage against like Corpus style enemies. Oh my. Yeah, we're not getting up this mountain on the K drive. We're just going to hop off the K drive here and ninja our way up. We're only about 200 meters away right now, anyway. Okay, there we go. Just roll, roll, roll. Oh, okay. They started it, but we can still add our container. There we go. That's two of them added up. Anybody gonna put more in? Nope, just gonna be us two. Alright. Activation. Uh, we know what our job is here. We want to take out that post so that more enemies do not spawn. There we go. And we want to buff our squad with our roar whenever we can. I'm going to get myself up here because I don't want anybody to have to stop defending to pick me up. Like, I'm actually starting to feel bad about not bringing in my max rank frame here. Uh, so, yeah, definitely bring your max rank frame in. Don't, don't do what I did and think, oh, I'll just get some extra levels out of this. Go ahead and put our iron skin up. We don't quite have enough energy yet to go ahead and do roar as well. But we can keep an eye out for our energy and grab it then. Uh, do we see any energy floating around here? I got an Oberon Neuroptics blueprint, but that is not energy. Yeah, we're not really seeing a ton of energy getting dropped by the enemies. Uh, we do have a Hydroid, though, which should cause them to drop more loot. Which is interesting. Oh, it depends on whether or not Hydroid is spec that way, though. Although most Hydroids are spec for loot drop, so... Then again, for this, they may have gone for something different, just because this is a little bit more serious of an event. Okay, everybody gets a Roar. There we go. Everybody gets a Roar. We don't have Iron Skin up. Uh, that's okay, we're gonna roll around, get some more energy. Iron Skin here. And our goal here is just to roll around and draw fire, unless we're taking out the... spawning towers here, like this. Okay, that's gone. We're gonna roll around, grab our energy, and buff the group. We're going to contribute what we can. Can we come roar again? No, we're just shy on energy to hit our roar. I really wish I had to put Streamline on. See, that's the other thing, too. Like, you just need to adjust to what you're doing. Like, if I would have put Streamline on Rhino here, 
and we were just able to come in here and just buff our squad the entire time, I would actually be okay with that. Just keeping our iron skin up and buffing our squad, I would think that was effective, at least at helping out. The fact that we can't really do that and we're just kind of rolling around looking for energy, not so effective. Okay, there's our roar for everybody. Uh, we can help a squad mate up here, so we're going to do that. Oh my god. All right then. I'm going to get back up right away, and I'm going to help our squad mate up. There we go. And I'm going to put iron skin on. That was not at all good. Uh, all three of us going down like that wasn't fun at all. The thing is, when you get the Opticor Vandal, the weapon that comes from this, all of these guys become easier. That's actually the main reason why it's good to pick up, is because the damage types on it are specifically useful in Orb Valis. So it really opens up Orb Valis as an area for you to, to do bounties and things like that as a new player. Uh, that's why I'm kind of pushing to get in there and get it. It is easier, like I said, if you have the Arcwing Launcher, because you can find things a lot faster. But if you can get a solid group and they're willing to to essentially help you get through it even though you're kind of a new player, then it's not so bad. We gave everybody Roar there, seems fine. Uh, let's take this guy out. Ow, that wasn't very nice. Uh, we're gonna just punch the, the living heck out of this guy. And honestly, if we had the energy, we could use our one to kind of peel people off of the point as well. But we don't have that that kind of energy flow right now. Okay, cool. So, that's gonna be it for this one, folks. I think we're gonna head back to Fortuna here and let these guys get somebody in group that's going to provide them with a little bit more actual assistance. Where even is Fortuna on the map right now? Oh, it's over here. Okay, I went the wrong way. I need to go over this way. Uh, and before we leave, we are gonna say thank you to everybody for for the carry, because that was rough. That was very, very rough. Uh, let's get to Fortuna. And then we will say our thank yous, and we will head out of here uh, and see how much progress we got on it, because we may... I, I don't know how many we did there, or specifically how much each one counts for, but last time I did this, we got like five, and I think it's like every... I think it's five and then 15, maybe? I can't remember. But I'll, I'll show you guys where you can see that progress. Uh, here we go. Perfect. Thank you all for the carry. Noobing it up out here. But trying to get the Opticore. Most people are pretty cool. Like, honestly, saying that, everybody's probably fine with it. They're not going to heat me about it too much. I mean, they can tell that you have a lower MR, like you're new to the game. Like, I didn't wait for them to respond. It's not about them responding and telling me it's okay. It's literally just about saying thank you because they carried us through it. Uh, so we got a bunch of stuff there. We got 18 Thermia Fractures sealed, which is awesome. So you can see it doesn't take that long to get through there. Like, we... I think we only did, like, three of them and we got 18 Fractures sealed. So, at that rate, it's, what, six per Fracture, maybe? I think it's like six per fracture at that rate. Um, and if we come back here, we can potentially get a message now that says, like you'll get messages in your email in game essentially that says, hey, you got this many done, here's your reward. So we didn't quite make it to shotgun spaz yet, or but we will get those. Those are amalgam mods. So those are mods that have two stats on them. They'll have things like uh, shotgun fire rate and movement speed or something of that nature. The Amalgam Barrel Diffusion right here, for example, and Organ Shatter, these are really good because they're movement speed and they are crit rating and multi-shot for your secondary weapons. So there's just really good rewards all the way up and through this. And the Opticore Vandal is just that sort of pinnacle thing. So I recommend working through that if you guys can. That is going to be it for this one, folks. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!